let's welcome UW and Trace, which is about securing justice through mixed reality. All right, everyone, thanks for coming out. Uh, my name is Dylan. I'm here with Kylan, Dwight, June, Abe, and Nick. We're all recent undergraduates from UW's Interaction Design Program, and we created Trace, a mixed reality collaborative software that can revolutionize crime scene investigation. And more broadly, we hope to tackle the problem of inefficiency in the American justice system. In a field like this where the handling of evidence defines verdicts, accuracy and efficiency is crucial. Unfortunately, that's not the case with our current system. Public defenders are severely overbooked due to a lack of resources and a backlog of cases. Just for some context, so the maximum amount of felony cases a lawyer is supposed to handle per year is 150. But nearly every district in America has lawyers working with over 1,000 felonies per year. As this article states, prosecutors are asked to commit malpractice on a daily basis by handling far more cases than any lawyer can competently manage. Spreading our resources this thin directly leads to the wrongful conviction of innocent people. Even worse than that, we have innocent people choosing jail time because their prison sentence isn't as long as the time it takes to get a fair trial. This is not justice. This is a broken system, one that needs fixing. So our proposal addresses pain points in the entire criminal justice process. By overhauling this process to be more efficient and more collaborative, we can begin to fix these problems for the sake of the American justice system and the sake of the American people. Crime scene investigation and court proceedings are plagued with redundancy and archaic data collection. Trace not only enhances the process of crime scene investigation, but also creates a more holistic case file, allowing for better collaboration beyond just the crime scene. As an investigator walks through the crime scene, it is scanned and digitally preserved. Scan, menu. This is a blue and white ceramic mug. There appears to be blood on the exterior surface. When a piece of evidence is bagged, it remains in the virtual space along with the annotations left by the investigating officer. Manual processes that once took hours to complete are reduced vastly with an array of tools to annotate and inspect crime scenes. The evidence in the holographic space updates remotely as each party adds their own annotations, increasing collaboration. Unlike traditional evidence, the virtual copy of the crime scene can be easily accessed by investigators, attorneys, forensics, and specialists at any point in time. Attorneys can also review the notes attached to pieces of evidence by law enforcement and forensics. Legal representatives may use the virtual space to create narratives for presentations in court. Mixed reality can be used in every stage in a criminal investigation to revolutionize the collection, analysis, and presentation of evidence to reach timely and decisive verdicts. Hi everyone, I'm Kylan and this is Dwight and we're going to walk you through our design process. So our team identified problems that relate to the collection, analysis, and presentation of evidence. And while we're no experts when it comes to criminal investigations, we started this design process by conducting primary research. And it turns out criminal investigations are not like what you see on TV. 
we had the opportunity to speak with individuals from the UW and Seattle Police Departments, and they walked us through what it means to actually process a crime scene, and there's three key steps. There's identifying, documenting, and collecting evidence. About four officers arrive on a scene and decide what's considered evidence, what equipment they'll need, and how long they need to hold a scene for processing. For the CSI unit we spoke to, this process takes about five or six hours, but sometimes there's a scene that's so large it lasts up to several weeks. The documentation of these spaces is pretty low tech and really, really tedious. The CSI unit we spoke with manually measures their spaces with tape measures, and they manually map out the XY coordinates of each individual piece of evidence. They then create sketches and photograph as many things as they possibly can to try and preserve that space. Once the scene is ready to be released, they take that evidence in question and they give it a unique ID number, bag it properly, and then transport it back to a state crime lab for further processing and storage. So from our conversations with law enforcement, and we generated three key insights. First, processing a crime scene is extremely labor intensive. Second, Evidence is commonly mistaken as irrelevant and is missed because the scene has already been processed and released. And finally, there is no overarching system to collaborate on cases and share notes between units. Trace streamlines this process by automatically 3D mapping the environment and the evidence within. After the scene has been released, a virtual copy of the entire scan is saved, meaning pieces of evidence that are initially glossed over can be revisited and things that have already been annotated can be updated as the investigation moves forward. Trace uses mixed reality to increase collaboration between all units involved in an investigation. We designed a system where existing technologies can be meshed and saved together to provide more cohesive and collaborative case files. In addition to speaking with law enforcement, we also had the opportunity to sit down with attorneys and law professors and they walked us through what evidence really means and how it can be used in court. It's imperative that attorneys have the opportunity to work with evidence, go and see the crime scene, and really begin to build their case. But as one professor pointed out, this process is really difficult. It might take several weeks for an attorney to get there. And once they're there, they might only have about five minutes to take down as many notes as they possibly can. When it comes to presenting that evidence in court, it's also pretty low tech. Attorneys are working with hand-drawn sketches, diagrams, and printed photographs to provide context for their arguments. And when they ask that pieces of physical evidence be brought in, sometimes they've been sitting on a storage shelf for about two years, so they begin to fall apart when they're unwrapped, or say a window with a bullet hole becomes shattered when it's put onto a tow truck and brought to the crime scene, or to the courtroom, excuse me. So then after talking to legal professionals, we identified some design opportunities to deal with post-investigative processes. First of all, all parties involved have difficult time accessing evidence. Second, demonstrative evidence can be, that's presented in court is very low fidelity, and fragile evidence can be damaged or ruined when it's brought into the courtroom. Both prosecution and defense should have equal opportunity to access evidence in order to build their cases. With Trace, virtual evidence can be accessed at any time from anywhere. Trace improves the quality of demonstrative evidence as well. That uh, Attorneys are no longer confined to 2D sketches on a whiteboard. Instead, they can craft powerful narratives and demos within the virtual space and present these stories in a much more compelling fashion. Virtual evidence bypasses the limitations of physical evidence when it comes to being stored and handled. Additionally, it can be studied and presented in much greater depth. With Trace, we've imagined a world where all the problems surrounding the collection, analysis, and presentation of evidence could be remedied through the use of mixed reality. From the first officer to step on scene to the entire jury when deciding a verdict, every individual involved can benefit from the use of this technology. By decreasing the workload placed on our law enforcement professionals, we give them the opportunity to put more time and energy into the parts of the job that actually do result in fair and just trials. Trace is not only about catching bad guys, but about creating a complete, integrated system that promotes social good. Thank you. Wonderful. Who would like to start? I'm blown away. It's, it's awesome. What a great application of scanning. I totally see it being used. I don't know when. It might be 20 years from now, given how <laughs> slow technology moves in that space. But it, it's just great. The video is awesome. I totally grok it. How do you bag virtual evidence? I'm sorry. Uh, well, no, the, the actual evidence itself is bagged. And then that virtual copy that was left by the scan is, is saved there. 
And so then, once the scene has been processed, it is now like in the virtual cloud, I guess, and can be accessed by any party at any time after that. After so we need to make sure that that's encrypted or secured in some very special way. Yes, absolutely. Right? So that's part of the part of a uh, problem there. Um, anyway, I, I, it's just great. I, I love it. Um, have you shown this? Have you followed up with uh, the people you interviewed with the, in the police department? Have you shown them this? What did the What was your reaction? Yeah, so we, we, during our entire process, we, we researched with tons of uh, people from uh, Seattle, like crime scene investigators, there was Seattle UW police, as well as a couple law professors. And so we really wanted to understand the entire process that they take in order uh, to follow through with an investigation. And we first brought the, this case, researched it, and then we made this final concept and then brought it back and tried to flesh out some of the details and they said pretty much that they would really uh, they would really benefit from this product. The only thing that we had to really consider was to see if the the data was up to accuracy and if that was on the back end side if that, if that was up to date, then this would be um, really beneficial and it'd speed up a lot of the processes you mean in terms of you mean in terms of the fidelity of the scan exactly yeah, like the accuracy. Yeah, I think one quote, I think I remember off the top of my head, is uh, one officer said, if the technology is there, every single unit in the entire state and nation would want one of these in their office. Well, so I guess one exercise you might consider is, is actually figuring out what accuracy would be necessary in order to be useful. Mm -hmm. you know, even if we can't attain that today, maybe we can in 10 years, mm -hmm. but it, it might be useful to know that, that benchmark. I was really turned on by the analysis that was built into the application, you know, where you're looking at the blood splattering on the wall and we're determining the trajectory of the blood. That's so cool <laughs> to be able to do that, to build that into a tool. And I'm sure there are other analysis tools you could put in there, especially the dimensionality, back to the measuring that you have to do physically, they, they were doing physically that you could do now virtually mm -hmm. uh, once you've done the scan. And again, the accuracy and, and showing it that it does represent the real world environment would be a piece of that. But you might think about other analysis tools that you could put in into that and uh, uh, be able to uh, uh, add more power to, to this application. Great, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely wonderful and impactful piece. Uh, well, I think the accuracy of the scan apparently a common question. Uh, I, one question, do you have a running prototype that we can experiment with? It? So. Yeah, and so for this project, you know, we were trying to tackle a very complex space with, you know, a lot of different problems trying to solve. And so for this, for right now, we want to focus on the salience of the idea and make sure the research was sound so that we were solving the right ideas. So definitely our next step is we want to get into full-on development, mm -hmm. get prototypes out there as fast as possible. Um, and again, you know, one of the questions there is like, how can we gain access to the highest fidelity possible of 3D scanners? Some of these, you know, they use some rudimentary 3D scanners in the space. The LIDARs. That, and, yeah, yeah, lasers yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem there is that the collaboration between those, um, those technologies is very limited at this point. So we definitely want to break into that space, begin development. Wonderful concept. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.